All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. Hope you're well. Hope you're safe. Hope you enjoyed my little commercial there in front of the show at the top of the episode. Right? I got Anchor decided to reach out to me and go, you know, Mick, do you want to do, do an L commercial for Anchor since you're promoted, since your podcast is on Anchor? I said, yeah, why, why not? I'll make a few shekels. I'll make a few, uh, a few quid. Right? Some bunts, bunts and burner, nice little earner, some bees, right? Bees and honey, show me the money. Why not? Why not? So, sorry about the, the 30 second commercial at the top of the episode, but at least now we're, we're out the way. They said we'll give you more money if you put it in the middle of the show. And I said, nah, let's just get it out the way and move on. Yeah? Let's just move along. Let's move along and enough of the commercials. So, uh, so appreciate you sitting through that part whilst waiting to get here to the good stuff, to the, to the meat and potatoes of it all. So how you doing? How's everything out there? Is the world burning down around you? I couldn't tell you. I could not tell you. You know why? I quit social media. I didn't sign off. I just quit. I just said, fuck it. I'm not going on anymore. Uh, taking about a month off, maybe two, and I'm feeling good about it. I'm feeling good. I'm off a few, um, a few days now, but I guess maybe a week at this stage, and I'm feeling good about it. I don't, I don't miss it. I don't randomly need to go in and check it. Why? Why? I've no shows to promote. Um, there's no tickets on sale. You can't go see any show. I still post my podcast up on Facebook and 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 uh, and Twitter. Uh, I don't, I don't mess with uh, Instagram. I'm not going on there. It's fucking, the world is a horrible place, and it's just, it's not good for me, and that's what I posted on there, I said, it's not good for me, uh, I have to go for away for a while, um, because it's not, like, I, I don't see it anymore, I don't see any, I don't see people, you know, Antifa put the bricks in the burnings and the black lives, I don't, I don't give a shit anymore, not that I, I don't care about the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, of course I do, of course I do, I just don't want to get caught up in the bull I just never thought so much bullshit would come from what happened with 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 sadly what happened with George Floyd right um the man got murdered the whole country was not divided and they said they were the whole country was not divided uh on that everyone realized the cop was a piece of shit and it shouldn't have happened right but yet we still manage to find a way to fight You know what the left does. You know what the right does. They can both fuck off. For all I care. I don't give a shit. I don't have to see any more videos of horrific people. Of of horrific incidents where cops are beating up people. I don't have to see horrific videos of people who are beating up cops. Spitting in their face. Um, I don't have to see videos of people stealing. Uh, I won't even call it looting anymore. Just stealing. I don't have to watch criminals anymore. Uh, I don't have to watch protesters get beat up by other people. I don't have to watch any of it. It's fucking great. Come on over. You should try it. You should try it. I don't have to listen to... You, I don't have to watch any more white women anymore uh, in a park yelling, you know. But I don't have to see any more videos. I'm done. I'm done and I'm enjoying it. It's better for my mind, for my soul. I suggest you do it, but so now I'm just now I'm just annoyed by by regular people, right? Regular people, like today, for instance, right? Today, first of all, I feel like shit because I I today's my cheat day food wise, and I just went overboard and I ate an ungodly amount of food, unnecessary. Like a cheat day should be considering how much I'm working out now, and how healthy I'm eating. My regular Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, my cheat day is usually on a Sunday. Um, I moved this week. Um, y- you know, it should be just a taste. Just a taste of what I'm missing. Hey, you like a chocolate, right? You've given up the chocolate for your new workout. Here's a taste. I fucking gorged myself. My daughter made chocolate chip cookies, which are probably the best chocolate chip cookies I've had. You can't have one, right? When a plate's looking at you like that. I just got, I went overboard. So, but anyway. So, over by me in Holbrook, Long Island, they have opened up. Uh, the ecology center, right? Which means nothing to a lot of you. Basically, what it is is a it, it's not a it's a cheap zoo where it's basically if you find regular animals, um, cows, 
right? Bears, regular animals you find around America that have hurt themselves. Um, they're kind of put in, 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 in captivity here. And you get to look, you get to go look at them, right? But there's also a jogging path, which is about a mile and a half long. So I've been going over there for the last two weeks and I've been doing five miles a day. Uh, you know, just a little bit more so, a little bit more than I normally would do. I normally would do like a kind of like a three mile thing. Um, you know, if I was doing a regular run. So now, but I did do my few days where I kind of dedicated myself to seven miles to 10 miles once or twice. But now it's like a steady five miles and I'm loving it, right? And I'm going over there every day and I jog and I got my headphones in and I'm just, I do the trail and you know the funny thing about it? Let me tell you about the people who've turned up there now, though, right? Because I had a week to myself where it was just regular people walking. Just, you know, you might get the odd jogger, a few parents and their kids. Um, just people, right? Just just people. Just just normal people getting out and about, getting after it, getting a bit of uh, fresh air in their lungs. So I go there. And in the middle, they have these uh, workout things. That's really designed for seniors, I'll be honest with you. Um, from my knowledge of working out, it's designed for, for seniors, right? And basically what it is is like a machine you might pull for your back or another one you might push for your chest, another one you might lift up for your shoulders. Little things that, that the elderly might go over, you know, I'm going to go for a mile walk, stop at this machine and bang out some uh, some exercises. But... Um, so I'm there and I'm, I'm jogging by and I see these meatheads that you would see at the gym. With their cut off little tops, their little shorts. I mean, giant muscular guys. And their fucking five gallon bottle of water. Acting like they're at Venice Beach. You know Venice Beach where they have the real weights? The real bodybuilders and they're like people are really lifting weights there. That's what these guys think. They, I'm like, what the fuck? People are, then one guy brought his own, his own set of weights. I'm like, what are you guys, you look fucking ridiculous. And the, like, you're not getting a workout from that. And it's, ju- it's just funny, like to see how desperate they are to get back. I mean, I feel for him too. Don't get me wrong. Like, I know what it's like to want to get back to work, to, to working out. But Jesus Christ, lads, be a little bit more like humbled about it. You're not, it ain't Venice Beach, you know, take it fucking easy. So I go out and, I, and I'm doing my jog today and all of a sudden now I see these little cones, like, you know, about five inches cones off the ground with like posters attached to them. And this one might say squats. You go another few, like maybe 30, 40 feet, you know, jump jack, whatever it was. And basically what happened, I guess a group of, of, of women, just a group of fucking Karens, right, all got together and decided to use the whole running track as their own personal... Um, their own personal like circuit training now, which is fine. Right? I'm all for people getting healthy. You know that. You know. You know that, right? More than anything you've heard, I've ever bitched about on this fucking podcast is people who are not healthy, right? Careful. All right, relax. I'm not getting into it. So, I'm I'm jogging down one part and I turn the corner and there's seven like young girls in their little shorts and their bra and they're taking up the whole path doing jump jacks so i jog by and i go oh, fuck. Oh, yes. oh, one of those right i do oh, oh. jog right past them i keep going i come back around the second time and now they're taking up another part and i go will you fucking move move and then they're all yelling shit like uh, together like they're all yelling shit at me like you know like i'm this fucking horrible person Right? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm a horrible person. Uh, but fuck it. So I go, then I'm jogging around, right? I do the next lap, everything is fine. Next lap, everything is fine. But I come up to the last lap, I'm getting tired, getting grumpy. Uh, and I turn in the corner and they're all huddled around. And I just, and I have to stop to go, I'm like, what the fuck? And they're like, it's a chipmunk. Who gives a fuck? Who gives the, the, the fucking chip. If I swear to God, if I could have fucking punted it, I would have. I wouldn't have. Relax. I'm not cruel to animals. But having said that, punting that one would have been fucking funny just to see the look on their faces. It really fucking would have. Like it was just. That's what I was up against today. That was my fucking. Um, that was my fucking chipmunks and Karen situation. It was just absolute bullshit. 
So I just keep jogging. I go, I get my workout done. And then at the end of it, there's like, it turns out that these are at every fucking stop, by the way. Everywhere I go, they're at every fucking stop. So then I get to the, I go to finish up on my last, my very last lap. I'm kind of doing a walk and a cool down. And then I see that they all had coaches. Now the coaches, which weird for me, really obese, really obese. I fucking knew it. Really, really obese. Isn't that like, shouldn't you? Don't you ever get disgruntled or curious when you see like a fat gym instructor or a fat personal trainer, fat yoga instructor? Is it just me? Is it just me? No? All right. I just thought I just thought it was just me. But um yeah, and they're all huddled around taking photographs and like it's just it's another and they're all taking their cell phones out and again it's more of this shit about like how you want to look like you're working out as opposed to working out. And that that's my problem, right? That's 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 basically my whole fucking problem with everything. Just get out of the fucking way, people. It's not that hard. Get get out of the way. Right now I know that's an unnecessary rant. I know it was unnecessary and you may have thinking I'm I'm a bit of an asshole. But like stressful week, like I said. Stressful week. I Brian McFadden called me the other day, right? You guys heard him on the podcast. It was a fun episode. A lot of people a lot of people sent emails to that, to my Instagram, that I didn't check. I didn't check. My, my, I haven't checked because that's where all my, my messages go to. Um, so I haven't been looking at them. But I know some people have been texting me saying that like they really like the, uh, the Brian Scott McFadden episode. But he called me the other day to do the podcast when I was in hospital. Are you okay, Mick? I'm fine. I'm fine. Son fell off the bike, cracked his wrist, didn't he? Fucking right, Aegis. Like a right, Aegis. Right? So, as you know, I've been saying before, I've been teasing this, but like, I went back to school, right? Just, I went back to school and I'm in this class and I was doing it on a Sunday and I just hear him screaming from the other room and I, you know, he's in and he's just lying there and his wrist is, I got like, all right, let me, it's on a Zoom class. I'm like, look, I fucking shut up. Shut up. Like, I get it. Let me just get this done and then I'll take it to the hospital. Right, hoping that he would have calmed down, saying like, "Oh, it's not, you know, it's not my wrist." It's just like, "All right, maybe I'm okay." So I like to give him some time first before I. I'm not one of those fucking helicopter parents that immediately something happens, you just fly your kid off the hospital. Right, I'm not one of those those people. So I uh, I go in, I finish my class up. I'll go into my class another day, by the way, what I'm studying, and uh, I just don't want to talk about it right now. So I fucking go. I get him in the. I get him in the car. You know, uh, he's still screaming. I make a sling for him with a towel from my old fighting days. I knew how to make a good sling. Go to the hospital with masks on. And, and then the, the women there at the, you know, you to check out. They're asking you questions about it. The weird, the weird thing is when someone asks you your kid's date of birth and you don't know it, they look at you like you're a piece of shit. That's what I've noticed. That's what I've noticed. You go watch your son's date of birth and I go, ah. I knew the month. I knew the day. I didn't know the year, and they looked at me like I was a piece of shit. Then I turned to him. He's got a mask on. He's crying still. And I go, mate, what, what's your date of birth? And he fuck. I'm like, why would you know? You're fucking 10, right? You're fucking idiot. How do you not know your date of birth? And he's like, I don't know. So then I'm trying to do math and count back to how old he is, to when it was. I'm like, oh, fuck me. So he goes in. He gets weighed. Then we go. We sit in the back, right? So now we're all we're sitting there, and we're all in the back, me and him. And you would think, right, that the hospital is the one place you don't want to go now, right? Because the COVID thing, apparently, apparently COVID went away, by the way. I don't know if you know that. COVID's gone now. COVID doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. No, no. It's now just uh, riots now. So don't worry about COVID went away. There is no concern for it. It's just, just riots now. So I think riots beat up COVID. That's what happened. That's, so that, that's, that was the cure all along. Who knew it? Who knew that the cure for COVID was a riot? So we'll know that next time. So I don't know if the AIDS people have tried that yet. Uh, so AIDS, if you're out there listening, I'm going to get a group of people and we're going to march. We're going to march and we're going to cause a riot and hopefully that's how we get rid of AIDS as well. So apparently, so riots get, get rid of COVID now. So I go into the hospital. The hospital is like, it's fucking just dead. Dead. Um... We go and we're sitting in the back, and then I'm, talk- I'm talking to the, you know, to one of the nurses. Like, what's going on? You know, is everything, you know, how are you guys doing with the COVID thing? Like, ah, it's fine. Just like that. 
that's fine. Like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, it's like, is there no, like, COVID? Like, no, it kind of went away, basically. Like, there's no more, there's no more of that. Now the people that come in are in injuries like this, and she kind of nodded to my son. Like, really? Yeah. Like, so you, like, so now it's like, so COVID is dead, guys. I don't know, I don't know if you know that. So you heard that here first on the Mick Thomas podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. COVID is dead. And, uh... So I'm sitting there talking to him, now he's in pain, and the woman goes, all right, we'll, go, we'll, take, we'll take an x-ray. And uh, so he goes in, and he takes these fucking, like these, and he's, the kid's screaming, so now I'm like, all right, definitely, like, and I've, I've done enough damage between fighting and just being a little boy who used to get into shit. Um, you know, he, he definitely, uh, I know, he, I figured he definitely broke something. So he goes in, he takes his x-rays, he comes back out, and I go like, yeah, he just kind of, and I hate this when you talk to a technician, I go, hey man, is, is it broken? And he goes, well, I, I, I'm not allowed to say. I'm like, yeah, but you're looking at it from your experience, like, ah, well, we were not allowed to say. I'm like, which is, I don't get that, why he's not allowed to say. Like, you could just tell me I'm here, right? It's like, what, is it going to be a big fucking unveiling? Is it like, behind door number two, right? I just fucking tell me if his arm is broke or not. So he goes out, and then we're sitting there, and then all of a sudden the woman, the, the, the doctor comes out and he goes, yeah, he has a bad sprain here, we're going to have to put a cast on him, give him a bit of this, give him a bit of that. So I'm like, all right, I'm sitting there, so 20 minutes go by, and we're the only fucking people there, and nobody comes out, nobody comes out. Now my son's fucking screaming at this stage, and I can't, I can't stand it, so he's like, so these nurses walk by and he's crying. He goes, Dad, I don't understand what's keeping them. I go, son, they're back there making TikTok videos. That's what they're doing. And when they're done with their TikTok videos, right, they're going to come back out and they're going to they're gonna hopefully fix you because I notice like, there's no fucking patience in there. So they're back there and they're twerking uh, and they're making a video. Um, and that's, you know... And again, you can't say nothing about nurses, right? Because now, now they're the heroes now. They're the new ones. They're the new heroes. Um, they're the new ones. So, right, we had the, the, the firemen for a long time. That was great. Now the nurses. But you're not allowed to complain about it, right? When they're all sitting there talking about their, their, their vacation and where, where they want to go. I'm like, all right, that's good. Oh, do you? You want to go to Aruba? That's nice. Just put a cast on his arm then. And then we, we, we can get back to Aruba. Can, can we do that? That would be great. Thanks very much. So then this fucking attention seeker, right? So they finally put the cast on. He goes into another room. They put the cast on. Uh, that, you know, I'm very big on letting my kids have their own independence. So I go like, all right, fucking just go in yourself. Like, can you come in? Like, just go right near yourself, son. You're going to put a cast on, right? So I'm like 10 feet away from him. I can see what's going on. So he goes behind the curtain. They put the cast on. And he's such an attention seeker. He walks out the door, and as he's walking out, he's he's limping. He's li- I'm like, what are you fucking limping for? You fucking you, you you cracked your wrist. You fractured your wrist. Why are you limping? And he goes, oh. And he fucking just starts walking normal again. I'm like, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Fucking kids, man. You can't win, right? You can't fucking win can't win so i'm sitting there and uh i found out this this week and this is what i was talking to my son about um the monkeys something going on with the monkeys not the band there's something going on with the monkeys so now did you hear that they got together as a gang and they stole some covid19 samples like they all got together as a gang and they, and they stole covid19 from people that's that's it so we've had now we've had the the the, the monkey on the motorcycle Right? Monkey on a motorcycle, kidnapping babies, which I'm assuming for sex trafficking, right? I think now monkeys are, are, are have their own sex trap. Wouldn't that be a great Liam Neeson movie? Just Liam Neeson against the monkeys. Again, not the band. Right? I don't know who you are, but here's a banana. Right? Just put them up against the fucking monkeys. That'd be great. And now they're stealing COVID 19. I'm assuming they're going to sell it back to the highest bidder. Right? I don't know what's going on, but I think. I mean, what else can 2020, like, would you, would you be surprised in 220, right? So, I mean, we don't need to go through a fucking laundry list of what 220 has been between fires, fucking, you know, I've had family members die, COVID-19, aliens fucking snuck in there that still nobody's talking about, the UFO sightings, monkeys are stealing babies, monkeys are stealing 
fucking COVID nineteen and they're gonna sell it off to the highest bidder. Would you be would you be surprised if some sort of fucking rapey Beatles came along? Again, not the band. Just like some weird weird rape Beatles that went around just raping cats. Like, uh, would you be surprised? That's what I'm asking. We're halfway through the year, almost halfway through, and there's been nothing good about it. Nothing good about it. But would you be surprised? I was talking to some of that the other day. Like, what would surprise you? What would it take to surprise you? Hmm? That'd be interesting. Right? I'm just saying, like, I'm halfway through and I'm already fucking done. I'm already done with this year. But uh, anyway, that's what was going on with me this week, guys. I, I'll, I'll, cut, I'll cut it off there. If you have any comments or concerns. Oh, I was going to talk about, I wrote it down to talk about how my numbers are weird. And I'm, I'm very happy. A friend of mine sent me a, a link to the, my numbers uh, for the Cheaper Than Therapy. And I'll wrap it up on this, you know. Or maybe I'll talk about it next next week. But like apparently I'm in like doing really well number in in the podcast is doing really well in, in like Taiwan, Denmark, Sweden. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about that maybe next time on the show. But for those of you who have been listening, I can't thank you enough. Appreciate you liking, subscribing, sharing. That's a big one. It's all up on, we're all up on YouTube, we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, uh, Podbean, we're everywhere. So I do, I do appreciate you listening in guys. And uh, I got some nice guests coming up this week. Um, I won't spoil it for you, but, uh, listen, anyway, any comments or concerns, send them to my Instagram, which I will not be checking for at least a month, maybe two. So it'll give me something to read when I come back until then, guys, listen, have a nice time. Uh, be safe out there. I don't know what's going on in the world. I couldn't tell you, so I can't advise you on anything. Uh, I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. Look after your, your families. And as always, well, I was going to say, wash yourself, you dirty fucker, but COVID's gone now. So um, next time if you have a cold or the flu in your house, um, like I said, here's what you've learned from Cheaper and Therapy. Just just ride it away. Ride it away and you'll be fine. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.